Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. On today's video, we're going to be doing another deck breakdown. This time it is to the Wild Unknown Archetypes Oracle. <music> Now when I did a video a few weeks ago now talking about how I use cards on my altars, I will link it up here if you are interested, I did ask if any of you wanted to see breakdowns of the decks that I spoke about, and this was one that a lot of you really wanted to see. It's a really unusual deck by a really popular creator, Kim Kranz, and so I figured it was about time I broke down the deck and had a look at the different artworks and also talk about how I use it personally. Now this deck was actually given to me as a Christmas gift. It's not sponsored, it wasn't given to me by the creator. I simply want to talk about this deck and share my own opinions as someone who really enjoys using tarot, oracle, and other divinatory tools, both in spellwork and ritual and within divination. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, as usual, I will leave the name of the deck and also the creator in the description box so that you can go and find it for yourself. But as with everything, take my comments on this deck with a pinch of salt. They're simply my own experiences with the deck, as well as how the deck connects with my personal practice. So with that being said, let's go and have a look at this deck a little bit more. Now the Wild Unknown is a very popular deck. I have the original deck and then I have the other subsequent decks as well. Now the original Wild Unknown is a tarot deck. These are oracle decks. And this one in particular is a super interesting deck because it's actually circular. Now this is the box that it arrived in and it is big. It is a really bulky box. And so it might not be suitable if you are wanting a more discreet deck, if you don't want something that's quite big to store. This one is very difficult to store because it is so big. And I'll even show you on end. It is a really big box for this deck, so just bear that in mind if you are interested. Now, Kim Kranz is the illustrator for this deck, and their works are absolutely stunning. So if you did love The Wild Unknown, then this could be a really good additional deck for you if you are wanting something similar in a slightly different style and in an oracle form. So you originally get the deck inside this sleeve, and when I take the sleeve off, we can then open the box. So this is what the back of the box looks like, or at least the back of the sleeve. The back of the box actually doesn't have anything on it. All of the information is on the back of the sleeve itself. So we can see how vividly colored these cards are. And it's one of the many reasons why I love Kim Cran's work. The use of watercolor and vivid colors is something that really attracts me to the cards. I find that the use of color is really beautiful. Now this information reads as follows. Welcome to the wild unknown archetypes. You will find within 78 circular cards in a round box, a lavishly illustrated 224 page guidebook. From the wellspring of the collective unconscious emerge images that appear in the dreams of every culture, illuminating our multiplicity and uniting us in the endless story of humanity. These are archetypes. Their limitless potential is yours to behold as you travel to the realm of dreams, visions and myth. May you always be on your inner quest. And I think it's so beautiful. I just, I love this deck. Can you tell? I just, I love it. So without the sleeve, this is the box and it is beautiful. It's got a little diamond on the top, which you will see repeating a lot throughout this deck. It's beautiful watercolor. It has some writing on the end there, but you actually open it with magnets at this end, like this, which I actually really like. I liked the fact that you don't have to prise a lid off the box. You simply lift it up, and open it. And this is what it looks like inside. And this is the kind of thing that I really like in the Wild Unknown deck series, is the attention to detail is immense. Now the deck itself comes with this little pulley. So you lift this up and the book kind of lifts up a little bit. It's a little tricky to get out, so just bear that in mind. The book itself is big. It's basically the size of a standard book and it's so high quality. It is completely matte. It is really, really nice. And the attention to detail is amazing. Every page is beautiful in this stunning collage type of way. 
And even the writing is gorgeous. I cannot get over how beautiful the books are that come with these decks. The same can be said for the majority of Kim Cran's decks. They are just beautiful. It has a contents list in it, which goes over a little bit of information about the deck, as well as using the cards and the archetypes that go behind it. The cards themselves are split into the selves, the places, the tools, and the initiations. And this essentially allows us to split the deck up a little bit further. So if you do enjoy working with suits, in a way, this is a little bit like the suits, although they aren't equal in number. The initiations is much smaller than, say, the selves. But it's a really interesting way of doing it that allows you to break the readings down even further. The only downside that I have about this book is that although it is a coloured book and it's printed in colour, the cards are not coloured, which I find a little bit disappointing, mainly because I am a very colour-oriented person. I love looking at the vivid imagery, the vivid colours that go behind every single card, and I do find that it's a little disappointing when a deck is done in black and white within the book. Now, I understand this is often done because it's more affordable to do it in black and white. Usually, when you're printing a book like this, the number of colours that you're going to use increases the cost of the book, and so they've chosen to use this beautiful beautiful coral colour throughout, it kind of matches my nails, and then the rest of the book is essentially in black and white, which gives them the ability to save a little bit of money so that the deck isn't quite as expensive for the consumer, which I can completely understand. Just a little bit of a shame to see such a beautiful book with black and white imagery, but that is just me. So when you get to the page that represents the card that you want to learn about, there's quite a lot of information in this little space. You have information of things that you might want to do. For instance, in this one, it says, have your chart read and study your constellations. At the top here, you have a little bit of information about the card. This one reads, the divine child, the star child, the destined. Along the side here, it gives you a little bit of information about what you might feel if this card appears within your life. At the bottom, it talks about the card when it's light, when it's dark, and if you want to go deeper, it talks about information about other pieces of work that you might find interesting to learn about at the same time, and then you have the information about the card. And this allows them to do a book that moves very quickly, card, information card information while still adding a lot of information on the pages, which I do really like. So generally, I really like the inclusion of this book. It's a really substantial book. Now, is it going to teach you how to read the deck entirely? No, because that also involves a lot of personal practice and development, but it is a really substantial book and it's really beautiful. So I do appreciate a book this size coming in this deck. Once the book is out of the way, you can then see the deck box. And I was quite surprised when I got this deck because I didn't really realize that I would get a circular deck in a square box, but this is the deck box. Now you can lift it up like this, but really you can just grab it because it is a circular deck. And once again in the bottom, even more artwork. So we have a pearl, we have a serpent, some flowers, some skulls. I really love the attention to detail with Kim Cran's decks. I find that when every little bit has detail associated with it, it just, it's just so lovely. Even the bottom has got stuff on it. It's so good. So this is the card box, and it's really interesting. We have the diamond appearing again. It's a very simplistic box with a little bit of illustration on the bottom. And I suppose if you wanted to, you could keep this separately because it is a little bit more discreet than the giant box that it came in. But when you open it up quickly, you will see that that diamond reappears time and time again. It's actually the illustration on the back of every single one of the cards. So if you don't like the illustration, you're gonna have to see it a lot because this is on all of the cards. But it is a really nice detail and I like the fact that it is circular as well. They have another pull tie on them which I find really useful to get the cards out. And even the bottom of the box has more illustrations on it. This is the attention to detail that I love when it comes to card decks. So these are the cards, and I'll be honest, I find them incredibly difficult to work with. For one thing, they're quite big, they're really substantial cards, and not only are they substantial, but they are numerous as well, and I actually find them nearly impossible to shuffle. I will have to split the deck in half, shuffle one half at a time, and then just kind of smush them together. I find them so hard to shuffle, so if you are like me and you have small hands, you might really struggle with this deck. I wish that they were just a bit smaller, you know, maybe just like this big across, 
and that way I could actually shuffle them, but because they're so substantial, I find it really difficult. My other disadvantage with this is that because they're round, they are really tricky to deal with. If you get a jumper card, good luck finding it because you are gonna be chasing it around your house. I've also found that they're really difficult to get to stand on card stands because obviously, you know, they're round and a card stand is designed for a square or rectangular card, which is just something to bear in mind if you do like adding cards onto altars and you like them being upright, you might struggle with this one. But with that being said, I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit and then let's run through these cards. see there are a lot of cards and I would love to know which are your personal favorites down in the comment section. I'll run through just a few of mine now. The Vision is a personal favorite because I love the combination of illustration and real world items and watercolor. It's so beautiful. The same applies for the Crone. It's another one of those that has a lot of things in it I love and you'll probably start to see repeating likeness between the cards that are my favourites. We have The Forest, Anima Mundi, The Animal, The Poet, The Mystic, The Heart, The Prayer, The Bardo, The Ring, The Tear, The Pilgrim, the Starborn, and my personal favorite, The Lover. I just think it's such a beautiful card. It's so lovely. And these are not necessarily my favorite cards to get in a reading, but they're definitely my favorite cards simply to look at. 
Now with this deck comes not only the positives of having beautiful artwork, but also a few big negatives for me, and it's one of the reasons why I don't use this deck as often as a lot of my others. The cards are nearly impossible to separate. I've been standing here filming this video for maybe about 30 minutes, and half of that time has been spent just trying to separate the cards. It makes it so difficult to do readings when you're getting three or four cards all stuck together, and it's so hard to separate them. And even with this, it's quite likely that when I was going through the cards, showing you each of them, I might have missed one or two, because I don't notice that they're stuck together, and they're stuck together so strongly that you actually really struggle to get them apart. And it's not necessarily that this is a new deck. I've had this deck for over a year, and I've used it on many, many occasions, it seems to always get stuck back together again. And if any of you have any ideas for how to resolve this, I would really appreciate learning them because I have tried to get into using this deck as a regular deck and I struggle so much because the cards are so hard to separate. So sadly for me, this deck is not one that gets pulled out that often, mainly because I just find it so, so difficult to work with, and this is definitely a personal problem. I find the artwork and the illustrations beautiful, I find the cards detailed and complex, it allows your readings to have some great depth to them, but for me as a practitioner and also as a reader, I don't grab it that often because the negatives in some cases outweigh the positives. I find that there's too many cards that are too big for me to be able to shuffle them properly, and so it makes readings really tricky, especially when you have to shuffle the decks in halves or in thirds, and then just kind of mush the cards together. It really breaks me out of my flow of reading. But if you do have bigger hands and you are able to shuffle maybe in a different way, then this deck could be really easy for you to use. It's definitely a personal problem, not a problem with the deck itself. Though I would like it if they would come out with smaller versions of them. I have the full size Wild Unknown Tarot, and then late last year they released the mini version, the travel size, and that deck is so much easier to work with because you can shuffle them so easily in comparison to the bigger one. And I kind of hope that they do the same for these Oracle decks as well, for people who do have a bit of trouble with mobility and they find large cards just not practical. The illustrations themselves are really beautiful and they do allow for a wide range of different styles of reading. So you can read positive and you can read negative. You can do single cards or you can do multiple cards in answer to a question and that is something that I really do like. The downside with this deck of course is that how you use the cards is going to be affected by the shape of them. And it does make it difficult to use cards on altars, to use cards in manifestation spaces if you do want to keep them upright, and it makes it really difficult to separate the cards and to read them in a set way. I have found them nearly impossible to separate. Maybe that's just me and my deck, maybe I'm just not very good at separating cards, but I find them really tricky. So as I mentioned earlier, if any of you have any ideas of how I can more easily separate the cards, let me know because I'm really, really struggling with these. And also, you have to be careful if you want to read reversals or not. I have found that when you are shuffling the cards, they have a tendency to spin a lot. So if you don't want to read reversals, then that's pretty fine. You can just read the cards as they are. If you do want to read reversals, just make sure that you're being aware of how you're shuffling the cards, because sometimes the simple movement of your hand in too much of a strong way can cause an entire set of cards to start spinning in the deck, and then you end up with reversals that maybe wouldn't have been reversals if you hadn't have shuffled them in quite the same way. Now I know that some people will enjoy reading reversals like this, I personally like reversals to be a little bit more purposeful, I like being able to take some of that personal action out of it a little bit, but that's obviously just me. Generally though, I really like these cards. I like using them in larger spell work and ritual. I find that that is so wonderful, particularly if you are focusing on the imagery of the cards. I think that's a really beautiful thing to do. I also like doing three card draws. Now I will typically only do this every month or so. I will do one three card draw with this deck and I find that it's really good as a general life reading. Now I have not experimented with it too much for exceptionally specific questions long term, so you'll have to let me know if you have done that, what you think of the deck. Ultimately though, I would love to know what you think of this deck. Do you have this deck? How do you read it? How do you use it? Let me know. Let everyone else know because I really like it when we get to share information about how we as individuals use a particular magical tool. It helps everyone expand their practice just a little bit more. 
If you did enjoy this video, feel free to give it a like, it really means so much to me. If you do have any comments, questions, concerns, video ideas, or just want to chit chat with the community, feel free to put it down in the comment section. And if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel in this video, feel free to hit subscribe, I post magical content every single week. And with that being said, I hope you are all staying safe, I hope you have a marvellous magical day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Thank you.